Good morning, good morning, good morning, YouTube family. Good morning. Thank you so much again for coming back to visit with me again. And for the newcomers, welcome. My name is Charlene, and this page is called Care with Compassion. We talk all things essential oils and elderly care. Um, before we get started, if you like this page, please thumbs up the like page. I mean, thumbs up the the page or you can and or you can subscribe so please take the time to do that if you enjoy uh, watching my videos um, this page is like I say all about essential care and elderly care so basically that's what we're talking about so before we get started I want to let you know a few things first um, if you're going to use essential oils I would never recommend that you substitute it for uh, any medications or anything like that. It's an addition to whatever you may use. Uh, in addition to that, um, everything that I say on um, here is my own personal opinion and in my own personal experience, okay? So keep that in mind when I am discussing things with you. It's my own take and my own experiences. And I would hope that you will get some kind of understanding and reference to what I'm talking about. And maybe, if you like, apply it to your life, okay? So today we will be talking about elderly care and different options that you may have for your family member. Um, I am a caregiver. I'm a private caregiver, but I've also worked in memory care. I've worked in uh, independent living, which is uh, one of the options you have. I worked in uh, assistant living. What I have not worked in is group homes. Um, I don't have any desire to work in, in group homes. <laughs> I believe that group homes is more so of a government funded um, organization. Um, it's a smaller smaller type of situation where let's say it's maybe four to six um, elderlies in someone's home um, and you may have one or two per caregiver and then it's a 24 hour situation and I think basically it's kind of government run don't quote me on that. Like I say, I can't really speak on that. I can just tell you what my research is and that that's what it appears to be, that it's like more government funded and it's more for, uh, uh, they have, have it for kids, like juveniles and stuff like that, like foster type of situation. And then they have it for elderly and it appears that it's probably that they're dis disabled or they have some kind of um, artism or... Um, what do you call it? Dementia, <laughs> dementia or something like that. I've never done that kind of thing. I have not had, uh, heard from other fellow caregivers that it's a very uh, good situation. I am very particular about where I work and whom I work with because um, it's just a better situation for me because I have so much compassion and love for early care and I have zero tolerance for um, any form of mistreat of elderly people, like zero. <laughs> so uh, I am very particular. Um, when I first started out in this field, let me just tell you a little bit before I get started on my, the information that I've uh, researched in, in my own person. Um, I was a caregiver at an agency, um, and I was just basically just trying to learn the ropes and different things, and uh, I did start out working at people's homes through an agency, and I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. So, um, and I've worked in some really, really, really nice <laughs> um, facilities, and I worked into like, a, you know, just like an I wouldn't say a bottom. I've never worked in a bottom type of uh, agency, but just average. You know what I mean? Average. So, um, yeah. So I've, I've had quite a uh, quite a bit experience in working with elderly care. Um, 
I've also worked as receptionist, so I was able to get a full view vision of what goes on with the elderly and what goes on with caregivers and family members. And I can tell you some stories and I will be. So anyway, let me get back to what we were, my plan was to talk to uh, to you about today. So you have uh, three or four options. Okay, in reference to your family member or, um, okay, in reference to your family member. Let's stick with that. So let's say you have a family member. Okay, so this is a thing. There are some elderly people who have homes and everything and they're empty nesters and the home has become too much to manage. They're very outgoing elderly people. They're used to connecting with other other elderly people, but they don't want the maintenance of their home. So they will go into an independent uh, facility, okay? Independent facility. And so basically they can come and go as they please. They pay their monthly expense, uh, expense to be in there. Um, I will say that from my experience, uh, that most of the early care you pay, uh, you can pay between, and this is, okay. So let me just say independently, uh, depending on where you go. For my research, it can start out as low as four, uh, three, three thousand $3,500. This is independent. I live in Arizona, okay? So it may the prices may vary depending on where you live. I live in Arizona, so this is the research from Arizona. Um, it started out at, at 3500 That's probably, you know, because a lot of the places I worked out worked at, it was way beyond that. So it was it would start out independent living about three thousand five hundred. It could go up to about six thousand. Okay, that's independent probably. Okay, and if you're going to a really nice place, it can go up to about eight thousand. Okay, eight thousand. Um, the last facility that I worked for independently, it started at ten thousand dollars. Okay, and I will tell you about amenities and, and all of that. As far as memory care, okay, memory care, depending on the facility, it will start out at 4000 and co- can go up to about 12000 depending on the facility. Okay, group homes, a little different, right? Like I say, it's government run. Um, I think they also tap into the client's social security or disability uh, benefits to assist with their portion of the pay. Uh, The other thing that's an option for you and your family, if it's feasible, is that a caregiver come into your home and assist you um, so they can stay in their home, basically. So, and most of my clients prefer that, right? Um, the only ones that I know are okay with being in this type of environment is the independent ones who chose it by choice, right? The other situations, a lot of times it's like the family members have, uh, encouraged them to do it. And, and, you know, the, the situation could be hit and miss. They, some of them adapt really well, you know, or accept it and deal with it. Right. And they just go with the flow and there are some that kick and scream. And honestly, if it becomes too much of a something for the other residents and, and the caregivers in the facility, they will call the family member and say, okay, I don't think this is a very good fit for them. So also keep that in mind because I've seen that happen a lot. The last client that I had um, did not want to leave her house. I started with her as a caregiver and she was at her house. Uh, She does have dementia and she just wanted to stay in her house. Now, the problem was she had dementia and amnesia and she could not stay in her house by herself. Absolutely not. Right. So unfortunately, the family, it it appeared that the family did not want that responsibility because understand keeping them at home is not a joy ride. It is I I completely understand that it is very challenging, especially if they have dementia and things like that. It's it's difficult. It's difficult. And anyone who has 
decided to, you know, allow their parents to stay home, you have to have a caregiver. You have to have a full support system with family members and you have to have a caregiver. It is essential because you you have to take that break. It You have to. You have to be able to step away and let someone else do it, right, who knows how to navigate that system. And that way it makes the, the process more pleasant for that client, for the family. Get yourself a good caregiver, okay? There's a difference. Okay, there's a difference. You need to have yourself a good caregiver who's going to be on board with you, who's going to be supportive of you and your the family's decision to be at home, who's going to be reliable, who's going to be trustworthy. Okay, it is essential. Okay, so that is another option. Um, I will be taking trips to different facilities so you can get a good idea about what it looks like from mid to upper. I will not be visiting the bottoms. <laughs> I, I, I just cannot. I will not. Okay, because I have no problem calling someone saying, yeah, you might need to check this situation out. Okay, so won't be visiting those places. So, but I will be visiting those middle to upper crust retirement homes. I tell you, these upper crusts, are a dream. They they are a dream. I will also say that um, I said one time before everything this glitter is not gold because honestly what it boils down to it can be the most beautiful facility and offer all the things but if they don't have good staff, good caregivers, <laughs> right? You just spend 10 to 12 to 15 to $18,000 a month just to be 